Okay, so the goal of today's exercise is to create a Verilog code, uh, make sure it synthesizes and simulates, and then uh, our goal is to package that Verilog code as an IP. We will then use that packaged IP into a system design and write both software, uh, as create hardware as well as write software for it. So that's the goal. So let's get started by creating a new project, uh, Vivado Project Wizard. So here I'm going to, my location, I'm going to put as Vivado 431. I'm going to create a folder on it called Project my new IP uh, next I'm going to create RTL project I'm going to specify a source so let me do create a file I'm going to create a Verilog file and what I want to do is create actually a 8-bit adder so I'll create my adder 8-bit and add it to the project so next, uh, next, select my board. I have the jet board, so I'm selecting that and hit finish. Okay. So here's my new my adder uh, 8 bit uh, module definition. Let me call my inputs clock. I want to create a sequential adder, so I'm going to add a clock to it. It'll be an input A. Uh, it'll be a bus since it's 8 bits, so that's 7 down to 0. B is another input, another bus, 7 down to 0. My sum, I'll call both the sum and the carry. And what I'll do is I'll make this a total of 9 bits, so 8 down to 0. So the most significant bit of the signal S it will actually be the carry out of adding A plus B. Okay, so you say OK. So that created the file template here's my my adder 8 bit that was added so let's open that up uh, there's a comment section for now to make it easier I'm going to take that off and my adder is going to be fairly simple all I'm going to do is I'll always add the positive edge of clock I want to basically say the sum equals a plus b Okay. I'll let the I'll let the Verilog synthesis engine handle how it wants to uh, basically create that adder. So here it is. So just to make sure that this is correct, I'm going to run synthesis on it. Synthesis has started. Well, synthesis came up with a message saying it has failed, and the reason actually is fairly straightforward. I have a always at statement, and this is the most common mistake I see. Uh, the left hand side of the always at statement must be declared as a res. So our s is just declared as an output right now. It needs to be output res. So let's save that and let's synthesize it. Before we package our IP, we need to make sure that our IP can synthesize. You should also write a test pens to verify that it actually works as an adder. So here's my synthesis. Uh, done it says synthesis successfully complete completed i don't plan on running implementation or doing place and route or generating generating the bitstream yet so i'm just going to hit cancel for now okay. typically i would add a simulation source to this project verify that this is uh this is actually working as intended uh, for now i'm just going to skip that uh, for the purpose of this video and go on to my next phase where i want to take this adder and package this as an IP that I can use in my later designs. So to do that, from the tools menu, go to create and package an IP. So in this case, we want to do uh, a new AXI4 peripheral. So let's do next. Create a new AXI4 peripheral, choose that. Next. Let's give it a name that we'll know later, a little more descriptive name. So my IP adder. 8 bit. Okay. If there was one from before, I would hit override existing, but there isn't one right now. But so you can leave that unchecked. Here is the interface to that IP. There are a number of slave ports. Uh, you can add more ports if necessary. In our case, we only need one port. So I'll leave all the defaults. You can click on these hyperlinks to figure out what they do. So there are three interface types one is light, 
One is the full and one is the stream. So in our case, we'll just use the light. Uh, the number of registers varies between 4 and 512. In our case, we'll leave it at 4. In fact, we'll use our A and B that we have in our system, as well as the sum that we have in our IP system. Uh, we'll map it to one of these registers. So we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. Okay, let's hit next. Now we want to make sure that we edit our IP. We need to we need to make sure our AXI peripheral wrappers are added to our design. So let's go ahead and say edit IP, hit finish. It creates a new project. The new project window came up, so that was the original project we were working on, and here is the new project. Uh, under this new project, it created a top level design called my IP adder 8 bit. That was the name of the file, name of the IP is a version number with it. And it's basically calling some, uh, calling the, uh, calling the Verilog file that has the S0 or one slave interface. So let's go to that level. This file right here has all the AXI light uh, clocking, reset, ready signals, uh, protections, all the signals necessary to make our adder IP work uh, on the Jinx system. Okay, so in our case, what do we want to do is basically find places where it talks about user parameters, user ports, user logic, and so forth, and modify those. So let's start out first by importing in here by importing our source. So let's add source. Uh, we want to add or create a design source. So let's go to that. Let's say add files. Now go ahead and find the project that we were working on just a second ago. So we were working on so let me figure out what the project name was. Project my new IP. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to add source. Project my new IP. Under here, it's under sources. Sources one new. My add eight eight bit. This is the Verilog file that we had synthesized and verified uh, earlier. So let's say OK, finish. OK, it just added my adder 8 bit right here in the hierarchy. Well, it's not quite adopted in the hierarchy because we, need, we haven't instantiated this adder yet. So let's go ahead and find uh, my IP adder 8 bit.axi. So this one right here. What we want to be able to do is a couple of things. We want to first go ahead and instantiate our user logic and then we'll we'll talk about the signals that need to be added so to instantiate it let's make sure we have clock abs okay so clock abs so here let's call that module it was called my adder 8 bit you user ip is the unique instantiation name uh, and for the place where there's a clock uh, there's a port for a there's a port for B and a port for the final sum. Now we need to figure out what goes in this port. The clock should be the AXI clock. By the way, you can also create a design without a clock. In this case, I decided to do a sequential clock where the output gets updated on every rising S. For A and B are the inputs. Where these inputs go is when we created the IP, we had four registers. Slave register 0, 1, 2, and 3. Each of these registers are 32-bit wide. Our adder is 8-bit. Uh, when you create an IP, each IP gets a unique address. The address of slave register 0 of the S00 port uh, in that IP is the base address of that IP. So what we want to do is basically use the lower 8 bits in this case. Lower 8 bits of slave register 0. It's a 32-bit register. Lower 8 bits to store the value of A. 
in B, we'll store the next 8 bits. This way, when we are writing software, we can at once provide both A and B uh, in a single memory write command uh, to our uh, to our IP. Okay, so here's the first lowest 8 bits of slave register 0. Here is the next 8 bits of slave register 0. For the sum, for now, I'm going to create something called adder out. We'll need to declare this signal. So this signal should be a 9-bit signal. So let's go ahead and declare that signal. Right here in line number 115, right after a number of uh, items are declared, I want to declare a wire 8 down to 0 called adder out. Now here's the adder out. I have the clock. I have the slave register zero. What I want is the adder out data, the output of my adder, to be available when I when I grab the first address after the base address. That belongs to slave register one. So here I want to write adder out. Now when you're done, one of the things I'd like you to do is after you instantiate the module, always verify that it's actually included right here. So my module just got inherited in here. Okay, let's save this design. Run synthesis just to make sure that there are no errors. So it's running synthesis right now. Synthesis is now done. I have a message saying synthesis is completed. We don't want to run the implementation, just hit cancel. Now we need to go back to the IP package right here, package IP product. On the file groups, we made some changes. Since we made some changes to the AXI, we need to merge those changes. Hit merge. The file groups became a green check mark. Let's go to review and package and hit repackage IP. It says, do you want to close the project? Say yes. So we have now successfully created our IP. Uh, in the next part of the video, we'll look at how to use that IP that we just created into a regular Jinx system.